welcome to the 27th lecture we are studying basic electronics and circuit analysis courses and the topics we are studying uh, for the past, past few lectures are from the overlapping portion between these two courses basic electronics and circuit analysis so today we will study about phasers phaser is a way we can represent a given sinusoidal signal that is that that signal can be a voltage signal or current signal it can be an impedance too in the form of a complex number we know that a sinusoidal can be represented as we know that a sinusoid can be represented as a cause or a sine function with a magnitude term, a frequency term, and an angle term. The magnitude, frequency, and phase terms have been discussed in previous lectures in detail. But this omega is angular frequency, in fact, which is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the signal. We represent phaser in the form of a complex number. We represent this AC quantity in the form of a complex number and we call it a phaser. A phaser neglects this angular frequency term. It involves only the magnitude term and the phase angle term and is represented as a polar number, as a polar type complex number. So this is A at an angle of, for example, plus minus theta we can represent it as A or T can be represented as A at an angle of plus minus theta. So this is how we represent this AC quantity sinusoidal signal in the form of a complex number in of a complex number in its polar representation. Let's solve two or three more examples to understand the concept thoroughly. I have devised example number one for you. That is A of P is given to be pi cos omega T. Right. Represent this as a polar as a phaser as, as a phaser which is a complex number in its polar form right so this has a magnitude 5 forget about the frequency what is the phase nothing which means phase is 0 so this can be represented as a number in complex plane having magnitude 5 and lies at an angle of 0 so this is the vector representing this quantity Magnitude having magnitude 5 at an angle of 0. So how would you represent this number? 5 at an angle of 0. Example number 2. Another signal B of T is given to be 10 cos omega T plus 30. This is a complex number having magnitude 10 and is at an angle positive 30. Since we have already studied that the angles starting from positive x-axis by going into the counterclockwise direction gives us positive angles at an angle of 30 degrees. So this can be represented as a complex number having magnitude 5 at an angle of 30. In this lecture, we have to solve another example that is example number 3. C of T, another signal. C of T is given to be 10 sine omega T. 
write instead of cosecant this is a sine so what is the difference between a cosecant and a sine a sinus a cosecant signal is plotted like this at zero degrees cosecant signal has a magnitude 1 at 90 degrees it is 0 at 180 degrees it is having a value minus 1 at 270 degrees this is again 0 and at 360 degrees it is 1 again whereas this is cosecant of t plotted versus t if you plot sine of t versus t this starts from 0 at 90 degrees this becomes 1 becomes 0 at 180 degrees becomes minus 1 at 270 degrees and becomes 0 again at 360 degrees so a sign a sign can be represented in terms of cause or a cause becomes sign if we shift or push this cause signal towards right by 90 degrees and we have already studied that pushing right means having a negative angle pen cos omega t minus 30 so sine of t sine of t is the signal that is obtained by having a cos cosecant of t signal shifted towards right by 90 degrees by 90 degrees so 90 degrees so 10 cos cosecant omega t minus 90 degrees and now we are in a very good position to write it as a complex number and at an angle of minus 90 degrees so if we have sinusoidal signal will convert into an equivalent cosecant signal and then we can write its complex representation in polar form the last thing that we will study in this short lecture is the concept of phase lead and lag in order to establish the two signals lead or lag we have to compare them on a scale we are given a signal a of t is equal to 15 at an angle of 0 and another signal p of t is given to be 10 at an angle of 30 and we have to establish which of the two is lagging the other or leading let's plot these signals first a of t is a complex number p of t is also a complex number how would you plot a of t 15 at an angle of 0 this is the angle of 0 we'll stretch it by magnitude 15 by lying it down at an angle of 0 degrees this is A of T. Let me draw B of T with a different color. P of T is 10, having magnitude 10, but at an angle of 30 degrees. So now we have two signals. Which of the two is leading the other or lagging? Since P of T, since P of T has a positive angle after A of T, B of T is lagging A of T by 30 degrees. So P of T lags A of T by 30 degrees because it starts after 30 degrees compared to A of T. So B of T comes later, it comes late, comes late, comes after 30 degrees. This means P of T is lag, lagging somewhere. 30 degrees A of T is lagging A of T by 30 degrees. Or A of T, in other words, the signal that comes earlier is the leading signal. It leads 
B of B by the same amount, 30 degrees. If suppose we have another signal C of B here, maybe C of B is having a magnitude 10 and it is at an angle of maybe 90, 120 degrees. So we can establish that C of T lags both B of T and A of T. C of T lags B of T by 120 minus 30, 90 degrees and it lags A of T by 120 degrees. This is all for this lecture and we will continue studying AC circuit analysis in our upcoming lectures. Thank you.